Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an upcoming huge storm that's going to enter into the United States. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think this one is going to end up being a big snowstorm? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video and first things first, we're going to talk about the fact that we're in a quiet pattern right now. Look at this surface map. We have some precipitation out west, a little bit of snowfall there for actually Washington, Oregon, California, and then some of the Rockies as well up there. But basically, take it eastward from the Rockies, and there is nothing going on. Very nice weather, actually. That's about it. So I guess that is something, but uh, really, really quiet here. And this is what it's due to. I don't want to bore you guys to death here, but as we look at that upper air, uh, it, it really just splits over California and uh, Nevada, taking that precipitation either south or north of the United States, the eastern two-thirds of the United States there, uh, and leaving it dry in the middle there, uh, where we see those grays over most of the United States. But as we move towards hours 141, which is going to be Thursday, March 25th, just five days away, we're going to get an upper air pattern that looks a lot more active here. We see that trough coming into the western United States and those two jet streams meeting there over Texas and then kind of that jet stream curving north over the uh, the inland eastern United States. I would call it straight through up into the Great Lakes and that is going to cause a very stormy pattern. So in a moment what we're going to do is we're going to talk about those storms and what kind of impacts they could have on the United States such as snow and severe weather. So here we are taking a look at that surface map again, and this is by about, I would say, 4 a.m. there on Sunday, March 21st. And as you can see, there is some snow snowfall going on for the Rockies, and this is only tomorrow from the time I'm making this video. This isn't too long for now, uh, but still overall a little bit more of a quiet pattern going on here. Uh, things start to get interesting by the time we're reaching about maybe 2 a.m. there on Monday, March 22nd, though, and we see a low pressure system developing down there for New Mexico, uh, and it's kind of close to that border of Texas as well. We're seeing snowfall there for Colorado. Once again, they just had a massive snowstorm, uh, so it looks like there might be another one on the way. Also, the Pacific Northwest has some snowfall as well. That is worth mentioning. Uh, let's just take this, and we're going to zoom in too, but let's just take this towards about uh, a little bit earlier than that. We're just going to zoom in and take, the, take a look at this once again here. So again, that low pressure system is developing there for New Mexico. We see some snowfall there for the Southern Rockies. Let's just take that towards about... Uh, 4 a.m. there on Monday, and again, a 1,000 millibar low pressure system there for New Mexico uh, with some snowfall up there for Colorado. This is just a zoomed in look at what we just saw a second ago, but by time we're taking a look at about 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. there on Monday, March 22nd, you can see we have a 996 millibar low pressure system there with snowfall to the west, very typical here in New Mexico, Colorado, and even Kansas and Oklahoma and a little bit of Texas as well. Very interesting there. Uh, but that storminess to the east is what I'm most concerned about for Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska. There is some severe weather potential here. Based on this surface map we're taking a look at now, I would say there's definitely some severe weather potential there for Monday during the afternoon and evening. Taking a look at that convective available potential energy, it tells the same story here. A 500 to maybe 700 cape here uh, on the European model is pretty high. That's, that's enough to where I would say we might have some severe thunderstorms uh, on the lower end uh, risk scale there. But still, nevertheless, severe weather it could be around here. And generally here, we're taking a look at a low resolution model. But once we get to, let's say, once we're at Sunday night and we're taking a look at the NAM 3KM or the HRRR model, those high resolution models... I wouldn't be surprised if we're taking a look at 1,000 plus cape by that point. Usually these lower resolution models don't pick up on that. And then once we get to the higher resolution ones, uh, we begin to see those higher amounts come in. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're just going to move on and we're going to move forward with this storm as it's actually going to get uh, a little bit stronger here in a moment. Uh, and it's going to move further north and further east. So here we are taking a look at approximately, I would say this is about 11 p.m. there on Monday, so the very tail end of the day. And then low pressure system eventually moves straight up into Oklahoma. We are still seeing some moderate, light to moderate snowfall, maybe even heavy in some spots there for portions of Kansas and now even Nebraska. But that looks like it's going to probably be a wintry mix by this point. Again, the thunderstorms to the east is what I'm a little bit more concerned about here. We see Dallas-Fort Worth, and if you take that northward basically into Oklahoma, that looks to be also impacting some areas there in Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, possibly eastern Kansas as well there uh, with some potential severe weather by that point. Now, by the time we're reaching about 2 p.m. or so there on Tuesday, March 23rd, you can see this has moved up further north and further east here by this point we have a 997 millibar low pressure system so it's it's weakened by one millibar so it's staying right in that kind of stronger end there 
uh, of the storm intensity there. Uh, we are still seeing some snowfall there on the western end for Nebraska, South Dakota, even northern Minnesota seeing some snowfall from the system by this point. Uh, and then again, possibly some thunderstorms going on for Missouri, Illinois, uh, Iowa there by this point. I would say even the Gulf states down there where you see some precipitation. So Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, where we just saw that high risk, would not be surprised if this has some severe weather uh, as well. Not a high risk this time around, though. I'm not seeing that. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen here by this point. Uh, now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the cape for that same exact frame, and then we're just going to move on with the storms. Uh, and, and eventually, we're going to see another severe weather threat. We're also going to take a look at the total snowfall, but eventually, we're going to actually see another storm move in as well, which is going to be very interesting. That one could be even stronger. So here's the cape for that frame, and as you can see, there is some potential up there for Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, Iowa, like I said. This one has a little bit of some lower cape. I mean, generally in the 250 to uh, 500 range, that can bring you thunderstorms, obviously, uh, and maybe even severe thunderstorms, but mostly down there for the Gulf. You can see the Texas uh, coast there, but also Louisiana, Mississippi. That's where we're at generally 800 to 1,000 amounts, which is definitely sufficient for severe weather. Uh, so we're going to be watching for that as they also have some heavy precipitation down there as well. But obviously, this is a little bit longer range for severe weather. This would be day four from today. Uh, so we're going to just have to wait and see. Wouldn't be surprised if this is some sort of a marginal or slight risk day here. Probably Monday as well. Monday and Tuesday, I think we're going to have a marginal to slight risk uh, for both of those days there. At this point, that's my early estimate on what I think the Storm Prediction Center is likely going to do with that situation. By the time we're reaching about... 4 a.m. on Wednesday, March 24th, you can see that we do have a 998 millibar low pressure center there over southern Minnesota, right there on the borders of Iowa and Wisconsin. We're seeing some moderate snowfall uh, developing again there for Nebraska, South Dakota, Minnesota here by this point. And by this point, this actually looks like a full-blown snowstorm for those areas. Again, those thunderstorms still ongoing down there for the Gulf Coast as well. And also some more snowfall for the Southern Rockies showing up as well. So a whole lot of interesting stuff is going on by this frame, actually. And then by the time we're reaching approximately 3 or 4 p.m. here on Wednesday, so later in the day, we see that storm up north closing out as a 999 millibar low pressure center. It's just about to move up into Canada, but we do see some tail end snowfall still for northern Minnesota. Again, still some snowfall ongoing down there for New Mexico and Texas. Pretty interesting. And still some storminess down there for the Gulf Coast as well. Uh, and then let's just zoom into the East Coast actually by 11 p.m. here uh, on Wednesday. And as you can see, pretty... This storm looks like it has some potent storms down there for the southeast, but it's really hard to say, and also the Gulf states there. The Cape is going to be pretty high, as you can see, anywhere from about 1,000 to maybe 2,000, approaching 3,000 here for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and then Florida there as well. So we're going to be watching for this. This could be a little bit of a higher risk, maybe slight to enhanced here, uh, if that was to play out that way. But again, that's more of a medium to long-range outlook as far as uh, a severe weather event is concerned. So what we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to do a few things. We're going to take a look at that total snowfall for the Rockies in the upper Midwest from those uh, that snow event that's basically going to take place. And then we're also going to take a little bit of a sneak peek look at that next upcoming uh, st big storm that could be occurring that, again, could be much stronger than this first one. So we're going to take a look at all those things in just a moment. So first off, here we are taking a look at that total snowfall here for the Rockies and the Plains. Don't worry, we're going to show the West Coast in just a moment. Uh, I just wanted to have this very zoomed in look so we could take a look at everything here. If you're anywhere in the grays, you're taking a look at about a dusting, if anything, within the lighter blues. We're talking about maybe 2 to 6. Purples, more like 6 to 10. The pinks, we're talking 10 to 20. Uh, and then those lighter blues, uh, that's about 20 inches plus. So... Uh, we are taking a look at a pretty large snow event here, especially for the Rockies, and then a pretty decent one there for the upper Midwest. We're even seeing a 6 to 10 inches of snow up there for northern Minnesota. Very, very interesting there. Uh, the West Coast, obviously, here, as we take a look at the Cascades and down through the mountainous regions of California as well, uh, we're taking a look at anywhere from those pinks to those lighter blues. So we're talking 10 to 20, 20 inches plus there for the Cascades, for sure even 36 inches plus for the Cascades. Uh, so yeah, a pretty decent amount of snow is upcoming. And here's that sneak peek of that next upcoming winter storm. And as you can see, this is just one frame of it. It kind of follows a similar track to that first one. 
Uh, so you can kind of picture the areas that would be impacted. Uh, I'm seeing here on this frame a major winter storm there for a lot of the plains. And then also uh, down there for the south, central, and portions of the Gulf states there. Uh, and even up in through the Ohio Valley potentially a major severe weather event as well. So we have a lot of upcoming interesting weather to talk about over the coming week or so. Uh, and I'm going to make a Patreon post about this storm actually right after I make this video. So be sure to join the Patreon if you haven't already. I'm going to have a post up there available for you guys. It's going to go way more into detail about this next snowstorm and winter storm and major storm uh, and severe thunderstorms. So a lot of stuff there. Anyway, for today's a confidence tab here we're taking a look at about a five out of six obviously this is just a storm we haven't really gone into detail about anything else too much so my confidence is a five out of six that we will see this major storm the first one uh, and the second one i'm also pretty moderately confident that will take place as well anyways for today's comment of the day i asked you guys what do you think the rest of march is going to go like in your area and jim thompson said the obx of north carolina warm almost summer like in our near future <laughs> And it does look like you guys will see some seriously warm weather. You're just to my south, actually. I love it down there in the OBX. So I'm sure uh, you're looking forward to that very nice weather that is upcoming for your region. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons. Property Damage, John Benbenek, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Alan Balemo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manor, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J., Luke Falego, Garys, and John Qualisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to absolutely destroy, absolutely wreck that like button, guys. It helps the algorithm out and just suggests this video to more people. Also, subscribe if you like weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.